people who are innocent don't confess. The defendant confessed because he was guilty, because he did it. Well, I think Laura Nyrider should just hang it up right now, right? I mean, that's uh, that's it. You know, the Innocence Project needs to close up shop and move out of town because Fallon just declared uh, the fact that innocent people don't confess. So all the evidence that Laura has that um, they do confess, especially those of low intelligence, ah, Fallon, ah, you know, it's not the case. He, he's just he's just so full of shit right there that's coming out of his ears, right? It is, it, it is it is indeed the case uh, you know there's a famous uh, dateline episode on the same on the same topic if you if you've seen it uh, you, can, you can you can watch it happen the kid's a little bit brighter than Brendan uh, and as he's going through the uh, interview with the police he's uh, it, the police oh you tell the truth oh no I'm lying to you because I know this is what you want to say because I just want to go home and get my meds and he, you tell the truth I know I'm lying to you right now the kid, the kid, the kid admits it he's just, he, he's just telling him what he needs to hear to get the cops out of his ear because he just wants to get out of it uh, you know it's the same it's the same with Brendan yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's so obvious and it's not just my opinion it's the opinion of three circuit court judges you know Big Jeff he, he also introduced facts not in evidence he talked about this blood seeping up through the concrete there was no blood that, that wasn't a true statement at all. That came from Taylor. It didn't come from Brendan. He, he yep. just, he is so, um, I can't think of the right word. He, he is so. He like uh, a used car salesman to me. That's the word that I would pick. He's trying to piling on all these things together, Jack. He's trying to make all these connections and has an answer for everything and yeah. make stuff up you know it's just it, like you said like the blood coming up out of the floor where's the evidence for that right where, where did all of this and and so he's pleading he's making this big closing arguments oh you got to believe me this is what really happened and he makes this impassioned plea to the jury that's just full of nonsense and uh well, i don't know he I knew think it, he, they knew that Brendan had lost a girlfriend. I can tell you that for a fact. And I also right. know that they took Kayla's statement and they twisted it. I know that too. They twisted her, her original statement. They twisted all that up. Um, it, this guy, really intelligent. Uh, I have a lot of respect for what he knows about the Wisconsin law. But man, I have such disrespect for how he abuses his position. It's, it's terrible. Well, at the end of the day, uh, Jack, let's not forget that he was one of Pegel's fixers, right? Uh, you know, back yeah, oh, absolutely. Back in the 1985 case, as uh, information was, was uh, coming in from, uh, you know, from, from Deb Strauss and Amy Lehman, it went up to Jennifer Nashold, who prepared, prepared a preliminary report. And uh, according to uh, the testimony, she began to uh, have a chapter in that report on Vogel. And guess who just deleted that chapter altogether? That guy right there. It's just unbelievable. Right. Um, you know, uh, the, 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 the Wisconsin fixer, I don't need to put that in there. There's, there's no there's no reason. Vogel didn't do anything wrong, right? It, 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 except, uh, you know, lie uh, about the defendants, uh, you know, about uh, where uh, – uh, Gregory Allen was uh, on the day that Penny B got raped. He was, at the, uh, you know, had evidence from the parole, parole officer, and he'd never even been in prison, right? Oh, but that—that's not—that's not important. That's not important for the Peg Allen report. No, not, not, not at all. Nothing to see here. Uh, you know, he is uh, he, he uses uses the law not for justice, but as a tool to achieve an agenda. And in the case of 1985, that was the cover up of one of the most dastardly things that had ever been perpetrated on a United States citizen. Um, so yeah, um, that that's that's the guy you're looking at right there, Tom Fowl. I just wanted to um, add that I put in Google wanted to pull some statistics and how common is false confessions? Well, it's more common than you might think. According to the National Registry of Exonerations, 27% of people in the registry who were accused of homicide gave false confessions and 81% of people with mental illnesses or intellectual disabilities did the same when they were accused of homicide. 
That is a statistic that was added on the 23rd of June of 2019. So it's been updated since wow. um, 2005. So what did he say again about people just don't confess? Innocent people don't confess. That was his words. Uh, this would tell me that he's talking shit. Statistics prove that. It is, and the th the thing is, it, it, so um, if if you're gonna confess to a crime, right, you uh, to, to to get this off your shirt, you know, if you're and if you're of average intelligence, even be somewhat below average intelligence, you're gonna be aware of the fact that this confession is gonna lead to, um, you know, some level of uh, incarceration or some some type of consequence, right? Um, but as they're coercing this confession out of him. And as soon as they ask him for something damning, they say, just tell us it'll be all right. And, and that, that's, that's really the, you know, <laughs> that, that's really the dastardly part of this because he's not capable of processing. He processes the, okay, it's going to be all right. Uh, and, you know, at, at the end of the day, he's probably thinking to, to himself, well, what I'm really doing is throwing Steven under the bus, but I, I'll just do anything to get these guys out of my face. So uh, that, that's, that's very much the way that I view uh, what happened in that, uh, in, in that confession so-called confession and uh you know well watch it learn learn take the time if you're you know if, if you're just finding take the time to learn about uh brendan listen to some of his interviews even take the time to listen to some of his uh phone calls he's very simplistic um and uh you know it, take take the time to listen to, to laura nyrider he spends his time um right, right now in prison with coloring books Right, he'll 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 draw pictures in coloring books and send them to Barb, send them to to, to Laura Nyrider. Uh, he's he's not, uh, yeah, you know, he the, the worst thing that he's been accused of um, since he's been in prison is stealing food, um, and and that and that's it. He's really a very gentle person. It's just not believable. Um, they, they they he he was to, to my dying day. He, he was a victim of the state's failing case against Avery. 